the animal is probably depressed and, and in pain. I just want to see her mobility because, you know, as we know, the vertebrae are actually attached to the margins here, and you can see she walks without any issues. Man, this tortoise has a story to tell, a story of survival. I'm hanging out with Amy Kai from the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary, and this redfoot tortoise, as you'll find out, is a true survivor, but it had a little help from our friends at Bush. Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennedy. All right, Amy. So uh, I've been hearing about this tortoise for a while. Uh, a couple from months now. Exactly. So talk to me. What? Look at this. I mean, this animal has gone through some serious trauma on the shell. So there's quite the story, and it's kind of interesting how the tortoise actually is going to end up over at Camp Cannon. Okay. Because I took the phone call originally. The woman was really upset. She was crying because, unfortunately, the tortoise, what she thought was a gopher tortoise. Oh my gosh, yeah. That had lived in their yard for over a decade. Stop it. This that's what, tortoise. That's what she said. Is it just wild? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just living yeah. in their yard. But she, they really loved it. They thought it was a gopher tortoise, a native species, so they always kept an eye out for it. And unfortunately, uh, one, I believe it was a Saturday afternoon, her husband hit him with the lawnmower. Oh boy, I'll bet you that you husband know? was in a oh lot of trouble. Oh my goodness. And with the amount of, of wet weather we've had here, I know my grass has gotten extremely tall because exactly. it's so wet you can't get in there. So he was probably just hiding, you know, and then he was mowing. And um, so they reached out to us. We called Ed, our volunteer. Cool. And Ed went out there and the whole family was really distraught over it. Ed realized, okay, it's not a gopher tortoise, yeah. but we still got to help this animal. And I think he kind of called you pretty quickly to say, hey, I've got this. Right, I'm taking yeah. it to the hospital and, so, and getting contact. So Stephanie, uh, she had let me know that, you know, this animal has been getting uh, antibiotic injections because obviously when you have trauma to the shell, you've opened the organism up to pathogens because, uh, you know, the integumentary system, in this case also the skeletal system, is the first line of defense against uh, foreign intruders of pathogen types. Also the pain. Yes, and, and that's the thing you with know? tortoises. People don't recognize that. They're such incredible animals and their physiology is such that it's so primitive. Uh, they don't wince or yelp like a dog or, or anything like that, but this animal must have been in tremendous pain. And what's amazing is I, that this animal is so tough, it was able to heal up with your help, of course. But I've often said this, and this is the interesting thing about the way tortoise shells and turtles heal, is that this bone here, okay, eventually, over the course of years, they heal from the inside out, this entire cat will pop off one day That's and there'll so be cool. there'll be black new growth it'll be scarred but it'll be new growth the thing is it takes a long time we've also got some trauma here if you zoom in tom you could see there was cracked there as well but the fact that this is a redfoot tortoise from south america that has been living here uh for a decade in subtropical florida we've had some pretty cool snaps in the last 10 years it's amazing this animal survived you will, know will it you know, when, you know, I don't know how long it'll take to heal, I guess years. Will that shell look like shell? Will it'll look scoots? like shell, will but it'll be, it'll be like scarred. Yeah. It'll be scarred. Um, it won't be as perfect as it once was, but you know what? That's the whole design of the shell. It performed its function. The animal is alive. If this were some kind of big cat, a jaguar, or something that it would encounter in um, South America, you know, the animals will try and gnaw on it. They could get puncture wounds. I've seen tortoise shells with jaguar punctures in it, and the jaguar gets tired, like, I can't crack this nut. Not working. And the animal wanders away, and they're just so tough that they're able to heal. It's just incredible story this must ha not all the time but it must happen often yeah right? I'm, so I'm like sure if it, it happens what should someone do what would be the well first thing if you you're not do? lucky enough to have a bush wildlife sanctuary in your community uh, a place that you can take it some veterinarians will do pro bono work uh, for usually native species that are hurt um, you can try and take it to a local herp uh, society um, I have actually seen shell trauma before and judging on the severity of it this was very severe I'm sure this was all just blood. Yeah, this has been over two months now. Okay, so depending on the severity, 
Sometimes the best thing to do is a triple antibiotic and leave it alone. Um, leave it alone, keep the animal warm and clean uh, and well fed. The other cool thing is this animal's appetite never really diminished, did it? No, honestly, <laughs> by looking at her and the way she was behaving, so you never heavy. would have known something happened to her. Yeah, that's incredible. So it's really depends on the health starting out of the animal. Um, and then, you know, for a few weeks, the animal's probably depressed and, and in pain, but they then just get right back to the job of getting through it and living. Living. Definitely so definitely doesn't seem painful right now. No, Look at her. she's like, can you put me down? Yeah, we go. can let her walk around. <laughs> I just want to see her mobility because, you know, as we know, the the vertebrae are actually attached to the to the margins here, and you can see she walks without she, any issues. She really hasn't missed a beat. It's been quite remarkable. You know, sometimes with the exotic species that come into us, it is it's difficult to to try to help them all. You know, but one like this, the prognosis is so great. And the, like you said, the condition of the animal when she came in was great. We have somebody who's interested in giving her that lifelong home. Right. That's what's really important. And being able to help an exotic species like this, well, it's not what we normally do. Yeah, you definitely, as an animal lover, that's the goal. That's it. So there you have it, everybody. We gonna, we're going to leave her here because she's got a couple more injections to do. But I will follow this up. Uh, when she comes home, I'll have some cool footage for you of me putting her out into the colony. There's a lot of boys. I'm sure she'll be popular. <laughs> They're uh, not discriminating that's for sure but I wanted to shout out my friends here at Bush Wildlife they do an amazing job for the community and more importantly for the animals that are in our surrounding areas so why don't you go ahead and check them out at Bush wildlife.org dot org o -R -G. I, I always say org and I get yelled at from my wife Kate because you're like do you know what that sounds like but anyway <laughs> Great. go now on over my website no for me. it's fine you guys are gonna go over there if you can give a buck 50 cents, whatever, it all adds up and it definitely helps these fine folks out. So there you go everybody, uh, another fun video, like and subscribe and head on over there and we'll see you guys soon. Take care.